Uh, two years ago, we created a post CSS to evolve CSS development, to find new ideas in CSS development. And today, I will show our results. But let's start from the beginning. What is post CSS? Um, instead of SAS and less, post CSS is not a template language. Post CSS is um, more like a pipe of transformations. Post CSS core is very small. It contains only parser and CSS stingifier. Parser generates uh, abstract syntax tree, uh, tree of the objects from the CSS string. And stingifier does opposite thing. It generates uh, CSS string from the abstract syntax tree. So by default, post CSS is very useful. It do nothing. Uh, all, all magic happens inside the plugins. Each plugin is, ju it is just a small, pure JavaScript function. It receives that abstract syntax tree, change something, and return it to the other plugin, like in the pipe. Uh, so post-CSS uh, plugins can do anything. They can read any part of CSS. They can change any part of CSS. So for example, we can do a post-CSS uh, or preprocessor tasks with post-CSS, for example, um, Unwrapping, unwrapping nested rules, like SAS did. But we create post-CSS not for the old task, but for the new task. For the task that was impossible on preprocessors, on all preprocessors, for example, the after prefixer. After prefixer is just a post-CSS plugin. Post-CSS is a new project, but it grows very fast. We have more than one million downloads per month. Um, post-CSS is used in, by big companies, but as any new project, it has, it has a problems. And the main problem is, unfortunately, we live too many years in the era of SAS stagnation. SAS is very good for its tasks, but unfortunately, it has many limits. And the main problem is that these limits, they came to our mind. Um, with post CSS, we can do anything, but people ask me only about the nested, nested mixings. And it is a problem. And my main advice about post-CSS is to use it not only for the syntax sugar, like mixings or variables, but to use it for real important maintainable tasks. But what is maintainability? And it is a bigger question. Why we even create uh, computers? Why we have uh, information technologies? Of course, to make computers machines sh suffer. But it's not the main reason. The second reason is um, much more complicated. Unfortunately, in 20th century, we find a new problem that is very big, that is much bigger than one man can put inside his, br his brain. And this is why we create uh, information technologies. Information technologies allows us to split our big problem into the small parts and solve it one by one, because these parts will be isolated. And you can see this pattern everywhere in information technologies. You can see it in internet. You can see it in its operation system. You can see it in JavaScript. They have very good isolation system by CommonJS to split things by two small components. Even designers has a own system of splitting. It is like design and style guide. They create nodes and templates by separated components. And now CSS. Unfortunately, in CSS, we have no way to split our big problem into the small parts, small isolated parts, because everything is global. We have global selectors, we have uh, global resets, we have uh, inherited properties. <clears throat> Unfortunately, selectors, properties, and media queries, it's all that we have in CSS, and everything is broken. And what we can do? And this is why we have a post-CSS plugins to solve these problems. So let's start from the beginning, from the idea. The idea is to split your design into the small components, like logo, like button, like search input, and to create a folder for to each component, and put CSS and JavaScript for this component into this, into this folder. Um, so you have a separated folders of each component. And here we have a first problem. Unfortunately, post CSS is modular sync. It has a lot of benefits, but it has a lot of problems. And first problem is that every project has own list of plugins. And this is why you can just take the, fold, the component folder, put it in a, 
your other project and deploy it to production. Because other projects have a different list of plugins. And this is why in PostCSS we have a plugins to solve problem with the plugins. If it's a PostCSS use, for example, this plugin, you just write uh, at use and then plugin name, and PostCSS use will uh, use this uh, plugin that you mentioned only to the, this file, only to this small file. So you can describe, describe a plugin to each file and make it separated. But let's go next things. The next thing is selectors. The main problem is that you can accidentally use same selector to the different things. And this is why we have a BAM. And we have a Syntax Sugar plugin for BAM. But you know, BAM is not a real good solution. Because um, do you remember that feeling that you feel when you using after prefixing the first time? When you can just forget about all prefixes. You can free your mind to a real creativity task, not to the boring stuff. This is why all boring stuff should be done by machines, not by humans. Humans should be doing only creative stuff. And this is why we have a CSS modules. CSS modules is like after prefixer, but for the select resolution. You just can forget about any other files. You can just forget any about conflicts. You can just write any selector that you want in your file, and CSS modules do the rest. It will add uh, prefix and postfix. So it's like an automatic uh, BAM, but it's uh, automatic, and it is much safer. And you can use it easily with your React, with your Angular. You can just uh, import your CSS into the JavaScript by Webpack. And then this uh, object, style object, will contain uh, all, all classes. And then you just use it like JSON, nothing special. But in this week, we announced a new tool to, uh, that allow you to use CSS modules not only in the client-side rendering, but also in server-side rendering. For example, with Ruby on Rails, on PHP. So you can use it right now. Go next. The next thing is the reset. And of course, the global reset is a very bad thing. But we need to do something. And this is why we have a post-CSS after reset. It is plugin to use a local reset. It will add uh, your reset properties to each your rule. And it is totally customizable. You can change the list of the reset properties. Uh, and this plugin will be useful for our next problem, problem with inherited properties. The problem is that you, can, you can't just copy, uh, move your component from one place to other, because it will change a context. It's, for example, it will change an inherited color property. Or if you just write a line height zero to your body, it will broke all your components inside because they, they depend on, on context. Especially when you write a third party widget, you know, you will be very surprised of other developer code, how strange it could be. And this is why we have all initial property. It's a standard property from W3C, and it will just reset all properties for this rule, all inherited properties. But of course, it doesn't support in Internet Explorer. But it's not a problem. In post-CSS, we have a CSS Next. It's a tool like a Babel, Babel, but for CSS. It allows you to use CSS4 right now, today, in your current browsers. And of course, it has a polyfill for all initial. Don't worry about this long list of properties. It's ideal case for JZip. It will be compressed very easy. And last but not least problem, media query. The problem is that media query is that, that width is not the component container width. That width is a page width. And what if you have um, two components with a different size, two same components with a different size, but on one page? How you can control them? Of course, we need some component-based media queries. And we have a solution. Unfortunately, it's not a solution for everyone, but it's very interesting. It is a container. It's component-based media queries. You can use component container width, or you can use even component container background color. For example, on the back background, it will use white text. On the white text or the white background, it will use black text. And of course, it's not just a CSS plugin. It's also JavaScript, and this is why it's a solution not for everyone. But you definitely should look into it, because it's really awesome. It's a really new idea. 
So, summary. Right now, in post-CSS, we can solve problem with uh, global CSS. We can make our code much more maintainable. Uh, we can um, isolate our transformation with post-CSS use. We can isolate our selectors automatically with post-CSS post modules. We can use local resets with uh, post-CSS after reset, solve pro inherited property problem with all initial, and even we have uh, some new ideas like uh, probably field for container queries. And this is why, uh, this, this is, was a good example why post-CSS is not the enemy for SAS, you should not compare it. Because, you know, the syntax sugar problem, it's really important, of course, but it's only one problem. We have a lot of tasks, very important tasks for maintainability code, like, like uh, select resolution, like what all that I show you, like a linters, and we create post-CSS not for the sugar, we create it for Z tasks. Of course, we have uh, plugins for the sugar, it's a post-CSS plugin pack, but you know, if you have a legacy project, you should not go to post-CSS only solution. You can use SAS for syntax sugar and use post-CSS for other tasks. Uh, but I use post-CSS only solution in new project only for one reason, because it is more, more easy. Because you know, information technology is about a control for the simplicity. And uh, one tool is always better, it's always faster than two tools, and you never have a problem with source maps. That's all, that's all links. You can find PostCSS in GitHub and follow our Twitter account, we post new plugins there, and simple machine blogs, we post the articles there. That's all.